Hello wannabe PR bosses, it's Jo Jones here. It's great to have you on my channel for my first ever broadcast. Thank you for being here. Sorry if I stumble, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Be kind. Um, I'm here in this mini workshop to help you on your path to success to becoming your own PR and brand building machine for your business. I'm gonna be in it with you, I'm gonna be holding your hand, and I'm gonna put you on the right path to success and give you lots of actionable takeaways that you can put into practice at the end of this video. Please don't worry about taking notes or anything quite as um, mundane and boring as that because I have transcribed everything that I'm gonna tell you now and it's available for you to download on my website, beautybeat.co forward slash workshops. So be sure to go there, after you've watched this film, download all of the notes so you can put everything we talk about into action. Let's quickly touch on what PR is um, and why you need it in your business. So a lot of people are quite vague about PR. Um, they tend to shove it in the advertising category, which is incredibly unfair because we don't get anywhere near the budgets that advertising agencies get to work with. And also done well, PR can um, be worth so much more than paid for advertising because there's nothing more powerful than an endorsement from someone that you trust. Still though, people find it hard to really define what it is because I've been working in PR now for two decades and still my family think that I work either in advertising or I work in a finance department because my title, wherever I've worked, has always been with the word account attached to it. So account executive, account manager and account director. So I think they think I do actually work in an accounts department at some advertising agency, um, which I don't. Um, <laughs> I think Jeff Bezos puts it quite succinctly without being reductive to the power that PR has. He says that PR is what you say about people when they're not in the room. And I really think that sort of surmises it quite nicely. Um, PR is basically your reputation. It's what people think about you. It's what they believe about you. It's what they believe they know about you. And reputation is important because reputation builds trust. It builds loyalty. It drives sales. Um, and it's what you fall back on in terms, if you find yourself in a situation where you're dealing with a crisis, we call it crisis management in PR. It's basically when you find yourself in a situation where you're getting bad press, um, you're getting maybe some disgruntled customers um, taken to your social platforms and creating negative conversations, or you know maybe you have a product recall or there's something that's gone wrong with your supply chain. At that point, when you're dealing with those kind of crises within your business, PR and reputation and good reputation are really important because you get to fall back on that reputation and to use it to sort of get yourself out of the crisis that you find yourself in. So reputation is absolutely first class valuable. So why do you need PR? Um, you work in beauty. Beauty is incredibly busy. It's very noisy, it's very cluttered, it's saturated with new brands, new products, new lines, new services, new categories launching every single day. It's a very, very busy marketplace and standing out can be incredibly challenging. Even if you've got the best product in the world that you 100% believe um, can change people's lives, getting them to know about it is a challenge because you've got to cut through all of the other noise and all of the other clutter that every other brand is making. Um, Beauty is also a very robust business because even in terms of things like economic uncertainty, I mean, I don't want to say Brexit, but <coughs> awful. But times like that when people are worried about things like buying houses because they don't know what the landscape is going to be like in a couple of years time, when people are facing maybe redundancies or job losses or are slightly worried about what the future holds, they will pull back or we will pull back on spending such as holidays, um, maybe the amount of times that we go out, maybe things like buying new clothes, maybe we'll cut back on... Um, I don't know, all those kind of luxuries like taxis and stuff that we would usually take. But the things that we won't cut back on, men, regular haircuts, 
um, shaving, women, things like get, maybe getting your roots done, buying the makeup and the skincare that you love, you will forego all of those other luxuries before that you will forego those. So because of the robustness of beauty and because of the fact that it's so, I guess, recession proof, as a lot of people like to say, everyone wants a bite of it. It used to be that we would be approached by um, experts and brand owners setting up their own brands, which is very much still the case, but now it's the money men, it's the private equity companies, it's the big venture capitalist firms who really understand the power that beauty has. They really understand its superpowers when it comes to generating um, income and you know making them lots of money. So everyone is suddenly wanting to get in on beauty, which means more brands, more services, more, 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 more. So standing out becomes even more of a challenge. The global cosmetics industry at the moment is worth $532 billion and it's going to grow to $863 billion by 2024. So no wonder everyone wants a slice. And actually what's really interesting, I think, is the services business, the beauty services business. Because even though the high street is in decline, which is incredibly sad, and you know brands like... Debenhams are facing um, going into receivership, M&S are closing loads of stores. Everywhere you go, it seems to be doom and gloom on the high street. Beauty is thriving on the high street. Nail bars, I'm thinking specifically of beauty services like nail bars, um, hair salons. Let's see what my stat was last year. Oh, um, it, oh, this is quite amazing. That in 2018, beauty services and the beauty services industry was the second biggest growing industry in the UK. I mean, crazy, right? In this time of decline and doom and gloom, beauty just blooms and thrives. So it's no wonder that everyone wants a piece of that action. The great thing also about PR is that you don't need to have a huge budget to stand out. Obviously, there are lots of brands out there. There's lots of those legacy brands, L'Oreal, the Estee Lauders and whatnot, who do have big budgets and can engage with influencers to create sponsored content. They can do events. They can be really creative with their thinking because they have the money behind them to actually execute things in a really elegant and impactful way. But if you don't have that budget, you just have to be creative. You have to be creative and you have to be clever. And that's where I can help. But before you even start on that pathway of PR and picking up the phone, speaking to a journalist or reaching out and DMing an influencer or whatever it is that you decide that um, you want to do in due course, you have to go back to the very basics of your brand. I'm gonna give you three steps that you need to take in order to get to the point where we can start talking and thinking about PR and how we can drive awareness, um, drive visibility, make your brand stand out and all of those things that we know that PR can achieve for you. Um, the first thing you really absolutely must do is define what your brand's USP is. USP, unique selling point, a marketing term. There's a lot of three letter acronyms in marketing. Um, I'll try and explain them to you rather than just dropping them in and not being like, Ugh, I'm so peel. Um, anyway, your USP is what makes you you, um, but also what makes you good, brilliant, different, stand out, what makes you, you know, unique um, to everything else on the market. Obviously, that's really difficult um, to think about when in terms of, you know, the volume of what people were saying and, you know, there's so much noise, noise, noise. But that's where you just need to distill it into you. Go back to remembering why you set up your business in the first place. No one will be more passionate about your business and your brand than you are. No one will know as much about your brand as you are. But what I see a lot of with brands is they really overcomplicate their messaging. They really don't keep it as short and sharp, as concise as they need to get it. They kind of tend to tell more stories um, when talking about their brands or positioning their brands to people for the first time. And honestly, People just don't have the time or the patience for that today. They really don't. They need to get you, they need to understand you, and they need to know that very, very quickly. 
or you'll lose their attention. So the important thing to think about when sort of distilling your brand is to really think about the why, right? Why you do what you do and why should anyone else care about it? There's this incredible, incredible um, TED talk that I discovered a couple of years ago and thought, oh my God, I've discovered, I'm the first person to discover this. And obviously there was a million other people that had discovered it at the same time because it had had a million views. But now I think it's on something ridiculous like 25 million views. And you really should look it up. I'll put it in my download as well so that you know where to look. Um, But it's by a guy called Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K. And it is an incredible journey to take you on to really understanding your USP and really help defining um, what that is and what message you want to give to the world. So the things that I'd sort of really ask you to think about is things like, why are you so great? Um, Why should people care? What do you believe in? What are your core values? Um, And what's your your promise to your customer? What can they expect from you? Um, And another way to think about it as well, because as human beings, we tend to think things through as a kind of problem solving solution. So really think about what problem you're solving. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in a just in a way to get your message across really quickly. So say, for instance, you're creating a brand that... um, is a teeth whitening brand. You know, the problem that you're solving is that you're brightening, you know, you're making people's smiles brighter. You're solving a problem of discoloration and bad teeth, but you're not putting it out there. You're basically saying your message could be um, making your smile shine like the star that you are or something like that. I mean, that's a bit cheesy, but you know, it'll give you an idea. I've also got put together some other, um, brands that I think do a really good job of communicating what their USP is. Um, One of them is a client that I've been, um, I've worked with for quite a long time, um, who I think is the queen of um, the message, and that's Charlotte Tilbury. You know, for when Charlotte launched, it was all about decoding the art of makeup. Most of us find makeup a complete mystery and don't know how to put on eyeshadow or put it on with and how we put on foundation properly all of those things decoding the art of makeup that was one of her key messages easy to use easy to choose amazing give the girl the right makeup and she can conquer the world i mean that tells you all you need to know about that brand right there um fenty great proposition theirs is very simple beauty for all it's an incredibly inclusive brand it has a very strong inclusive brand positioning beauty for all. Three words, says everything you need to know about that brand. Um, A good one as well, I think, that's actually really stood the test of time um, and is an incredible, I mean, I think it's been going around for, God, well over 10, 15 years, is L'Oreal, because you're worth it. The good thing about that, which I absolutely love, is that it hasn't got old, it doesn't feel tired, it doesn't feel like it needs renewing. I mean, whoever came up with it is an absolute genius. Um... And also it puts the customer right in the heart of all of their propositions because you are worth it. It's not because we are worth it. We, L'Oreal, the company, it's you, our customer. You are worth it and you're our focus and I think that's really great. Um, Glossier as well, really good um, at um, really understanding and putting across their brand positioning and what they believe in a very succinct and fast way. Beauty in real life, love it. Um, products inspired by people who use them. They're all about the customer, the community. I mean, so concisely put, so brilliantly put. Skin first when they're talking about skin, because you know what? You put your skin first, everything else is fine. You know, you look after your skin, your makeup will look better. We're a skin first brand, I love that. When they do talk about makeup, it's makeup that lives with you, not on you. Easy message, succinct, really easy to understand body shop doing no harm love your body empowering women all around the world body shop's actually quite an interesting one because they've taken um a sort of a full circle so they've been owned by quite a few different companies um and actually dame anita roddick who was my absolute hero when i was a kid um and actually for quite a long time if you go back and look at some of the youtube um films and interview archives that exist um, with her, you'll see that she 
knew all of this stuff that's happening now because of social media and the way that the world is going. She was doing it all 25, 30 years ago. Quite incredible. And the body shop have actually now in their, I think their fourth um, acquirement, you know, uh, the fourth of time of being acquired by a different um, parent company are now going back to what Anita started with, which I think is a really incredible um, sort of understanding of someone who really knows what they're talking about. So really take time to think about your brand USP. Sit there, spend the time. I promise you it will be time worth spent because if you do that, you can then use it as a path to build your PR and communications on. It's really important. So get that done. Okay, so the second thing that you're going to do is take a huge deep dive into who your target customer is. If you know your target customer inside and out, you will be able to create successful PR strategies that reach them. There's no point in creating great campaigns if they're hitting people who aren't interested and who are never going to be interested in your message. It's a complete waste of your time and it's a complete waste of your money know your customer and don't just know them by age or where they live or those kind of like generic stuff know who they are know what they believe in know what's important to them know where they spend their time know where they how they consume their media know how they live their day do they go to the gym do they commute do they have children do they have grandchildren do they um hate television do they never pick up a magazine maybe they read a paper every week understand as much about them as you can because the more that you know about them and how they spend their time the more successful your PR campaign will be this is an absolute golden rule of all marketing and of all PR and communications everything starts with your customer I am blown away by the brands and businesses that make assumptions about their customers. Well, you know, they believe this, they do this, blah, 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 without asking them. Those assumptions will kill your business. Know your customer and stay in tune with them as well because people don't stay the same forever. You know, people change, they evolve, they move on, different things matter to them, but you need to know them. And the best place to start, and I think this is a really good tip, is to go and speak to your existing customer, which sounds weird, right? So I think if I'd said that, some people that I say that to, they were like, well, there's no point in that because we've already got them as a customer and they're a loyal customer, so we don't need to know anything about them because we've got them already. Uh-uh, totally wrong and bad attitude. Just because they're a customer of yours already, it doesn't mean that they are gonna be loyal to you forever. It doesn't mean that they feel valued. It doesn't mean that they will endorse you to their friends or family. There could be lots of reasons that they keep coming to you. It could be that it's convenience. It could be that um, the price is, is right for them. They might not enjoy the experience at all. They might not be Instagramming or putting you on their social media because they don't wanna support your business. Or there could be gems of information that they could give you about your business that you haven't thought about before from the customer's perspective. So go and talk to your existing customers, ask them why they like you, ask them why they spend their time with you versus X brand down the road or whatever. You will learn the most valuable pieces of information that you can then use to create PR campaigns that will connect with people like them. People that you know, once they're through the door, you can lock them in. Very important. Okay, so my third and final tip for you today in this mini workshop is this. Know your business. It sounds weird, right? Because no one knows your business better than you. I mean, know your beauty business. You may be a nail salon, a hair salon. You may be a product company that deals with organic ingredients. You may be a cosmetics company, whatever you are. You are not a nail business. You are a beauty business. You are not a tanning business. You are a beauty business. You need to know about the beauty world. If you want beauty storytellers and beauty experts to support you and your business and deliver your message through their channels with PR, 
You need to know the beauty business. You need to be connected to beauty as a whole. So that means reading things like um, Beauty Inc, which is part of WWD, looking on business of fashion, looking at the diary directory. Business of fashion, by the way, have a business of beauty section, which is why I mention it. Read trade titles like Hairdresser's Journal and Scratch and all the ones that you know, cosmetic business, those kind of things. Again, I will, lead, I will list them all, all that suggested reading in my download notes that you can get from my website um, after um, you finish watching this film, but know your business because when we start talking about PR and building your PR campaigns, we're going to have to create stories around different elements of your business that we want message carriers. That's what we call people like journalists and broadcasters and um, influencers. We want them to tell. They need stories that are relevant, topical, newsworthy. If you don't know what's going on in beauty, as a whole, if you don't know that there's been some problem with an ingredient or um, some kind of packaging or whatever it is that's going on over there, and you're pitching a story or trying to pitch a story to a journalist or an influencer that contains that ingredient or that um, is made of this plastic or whatever it is, it's not good. It's just not going to go anywhere. Again, waste of time, waste of your money. Know your business. Follow people who are the message carriers that you want to connect with and engage. Be part of their conversation. Immerse yourself. Be supportive. Say things when you think it's the right thing to say. It's totally fine to do that, but know what you're talking about. And in order to know that, you need to be informed. So stay informed. Okay, so let's just summarise over the three things that we've talked about today, which are the three first steps that you need to take to get you on that path of becoming your own PR boss. So the first one is find out, distill, make it concise, your USP, your why. What's your slogan? Why do you exist? Why should anyone care? And really distill that message. It could be that you've got three small bullet points of messages. It could be that you've got two words, it could be that you've got one word, whatever it is, sit there, think about it, think of that message that you can deliver really fast and effectively to your target audience, number one. Number two, know your audience. Go out, speak to them, speak to existing um, clients already, ask loads of questions, find out how they live their lives, how they consume their media, all of the things that we talked about earlier, go out, do that. The insights that you will get from those conversations will be absolute gold for you when it comes to building your PR campaign. And the third thing, the last thing, equally important, is to know your business. Immerse yourself in the beauty business. There are so many amazing channels and platforms that you can tune into that will keep you abreast of what is happening in your industry. So make sure that you're part of that world and that you're connected to it. So that's it for today. That's my first um, ever <laughs> YouTube um, Beauty Beat workshop, Fast and Furious workshop. Um, I will be downloading them on a regular basis. I am aiming for every Friday. Um, hopefully I'll get there. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe so that you stay ahead of everything that I'm uploading, downloading, or whatever the terminology is. And remember to go over to my website, beautybeat.co forward slash workshops to download all of the notes from today's meeting. Good luck with your actions. Get on with it. You can do it. You're well on your road to becoming a PR boss. Thank you. Don't forget to head over to my website, beautybeat.co forward slash free advice to download the transcript from today's film. See you there.